Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Green, and with me is my wife, Dee. As we continue to work our way back, we believe the first thing to get back to is prayer. After 40 years of ministry, we know that prayer changes things. You're not alone. If you need prayer, call the MTC Christ is Center prayer line. Or submit your prayer request online, mtcfc.org. Remember, Remember, we're we're here here for for you, and and we've got your back. Jesus all over the building if you can if it's physically possible will you rest on your feet as we sing this song that makes demons tremble praise the name of Jesus the name not a name the name of Jesus the name that is above every name the name that every knee shall bow every tongue confess to the glory of God the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord things in heaven things in the earth things above the earth he's my fortress he's my deliverer bring that standard with the name of Jesus let's lift the name of Jesus For when the enemy shall come in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. Come, 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 come to my right, please. Yes, yes, yes. Lift that name. We're not ashamed of it. Stand right there and lift it up. Hallelujah. Hands are raised. Hands are raised. Every contest starts with the raising of the colors. We raise the color. We lift up the blood-stained banner. Hands are raised. Told our him. Tell him thank you, Lord. For the name of the Lord uh, is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they find safety. He's my fortress he's a rock in a weary land he's my deliverer it is in him will I trust will I trust one last time praise the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you put your hands together one more time with me? Already you've had a praise going that I thought y'all wasn't going to let me in at all. But I, I think y'all feeling it right now. Will you help me lift a praise for the name of Jesus? I tell you what. I tell you what. That name still work. I heard Elder Tom say, let's put that name to work. Let's put that name to work today. That name still work. Let's put that name to work. Let's start the week off. Let's let's start the week off with a name. And at the same time, simultaneously, let's end the first six months of 2023. I don't know any sporting event that doesn't have some form of a halftime when they just stop for a moment and just stop for a moment in seven innings or something and 
just seven innings stretch for LSU. I know that's on your mind, but if it's the Crimson Tide, it's halftime. Why don't you do what he just said? Just stretch your hands up to the Father. Give God a I stretch. It's a stretch. My hands. In, in baseball, they call the seventh inning stretch to, to the for the last six months. No other. Seventh inning stretch, halftime. Come on, stretch your hands in. That I, that I know, that I know. It's an old school, but it's withdraw. Come on, stretch those hands all over. Thyself. Toad out. Ooh. Oh, weather. You stretched them in January, February, March, April, May, and in June. And you're going to need them in July. I promise you, you're going to need him. I promise you, you're going to need him. Will you lift your hand to Abba, Father? Father! Oh, my God. I stretch uh, my hands. Uh, Psalm 68 ends by saying, around verse 20, Ethiopia shall soon stretch her hands. Ethiopia in Psalm 68 shall soon stretch. That I. If there is another help, I don't know about it. If thou, if you should ever withdraw thyself, I see some of you in the back, you got it. Oh, whether there. Thank him, just thank him. Just thank him. Can we just do that on the organ just a little bit? Can you lift your hands just for a seventh inning for what the Lord has done for the last six months? And what he's getting ready to do for the next six months? Leadership, I'll speak with more specificity later. But right now, you can look back over the last six months and say, I made it. Uh, with doctor's visits and with personal visits, uh, people all around you in all kind of situations falling like flies. Uh, but God kept you, God kept you, God kept you, kept your mind, uh, kept your children, uh, kept your family. Here now. My God, one. Uh, come on, this is not ceremonial, this is real. Oh, Lord, we will give a semi-report tonight to the leaders. But when I look back, let me do this and I'm going to, I'm going to transition here. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to lay my hands on the children. But I want to tell you that this week I even, uh, oh, don't do that. And you so bless God with the jubal praise in Genesis 4:21 that I messed around myself and had a jubilee week. I'm talking about personally. Come, sometimes y'all think I ain't got no challenges, but I personally experienced three miracles myself this week. You didn't hear what I said, and that's what's in me. I want to start there because such as I have, I want to give to you. I saw God do three, I didn't say three blessings, I said three miracles this week. Because of the men, hell in the heart. And I'm here starting and ending this last week with the minimum of three miracles in your life. Elder Jackie prayed, God, send signs and wonders in this place. Thank you. 
and they were in different area they were in different institutions but they were personally some had to do with social issues others had to do with physical issues and others had to do with ministry issues in every area i saw god move like did not make no sense but there was one common denominator for london there was one common denominator i heard one uh, uh preacher and i'm getting ready to go on this television show uh, uh in jasper tommy combs uh, uh he's a healing uh, evangelist uh, and he has a television station called tv 25 and i've been knowing him for years and we knocked on the door to Dries and Patty and say can you advertise what's happening in Jasper he owns the television station reaching in a minimum of 225,000 homes and he said this door is wide open for you look at your neighbor said their first miracle is there's a door wide open for you Woo! praise him for your next door first Corinthians 16 if you don't do that but open your lips so you can live and breathe praise him for your breath him. Open your mouth and shall block him for your door. Not your house door, not your house car door. The doors of your lips keep watch over my mouth. Keep at the door of my lips. Play it to the glory. Play it to the glory. Play it. High, high, high. Until organs are healed. Until tumors are healed. Until those that own ventilators are coming off the ventilator. Hi! 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 What you say? Institution pull myself together, and by the next morning, it was all well. It was all well. Hey, it was all well. Jesus, Son of the Living God. The God that was, the God that is. releasing over the next six months what is to come what is to come elder jack is said twice let the spirit of glory rest in this place let signs huh, and wonders I'm so glad I go to this church uh, because the elders did an altar call. And Elder Thompson, while you were praying, I was on my knees in my office and saying to God, I need a miracle this week. Thank God for the altars. Thank God for the altars. Oh, Jehovah Nishi, the Lord God, our victory. God gave the victory. Victory is in the camp. Victory. We win. We win. We win. Not only did we win, but Elder Carey said, we won. We won. We won. Tell somebody I'm looking at your December of 2023, and I'm rewinding it to this moment. And what it looked like is you the one every battle you're facing. I'm declaring your end from the beginning. Things that are not yet done. But I will do all my pleasure, say it the Lord. 500 times, Carrie said, and it came to pass. Robert? Opened up his television station said come record this coming Thursday because I want to run what you're doing in Jasper all month long free and 
furthermore, if you think it's only about Jasper, he's an evangelist. I called the staff in my office. He started the conversation by saying, I want to tell you what I've been feasting on. I'm doing a book call. The camels are coming. I I said, wait a minute, shut the front door. You mean the same passage that I just got through preaching, this was Monday, on yesterday, out of Genesis 24, where Father Abraham sends Eleazar to get a wife for Isaac. And he's sitting there meditating, and while he was thinking about God, his blessing was on the way. Look at your name and say, while you're thinking about God, while you're praising God, God didn't already ship for the next six months. Everything, you didn't hear what I said. While you are meditating and praising God, God didn't already shift it. Isaiah, over in Genesis 24, said, at even time, Isaac was, had his mind on the word, but he didn't know that the camels were loaded. The man had watched our broadcast. Sometimes we just... Just don't listen. I'll talk about three prophetic things in a moment. At graduation, I did a message called the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard. Not knowing that last week that the Navy and the Coast Guard would have to go out and protect where you've been coasting. This was the message at the graduation. The Coast Guard, the Coast, the Course, and the Curse. Not even knowing three weeks later, so my brother Robert was in the branch of government called the Coast Guard. I preached that two weeks ago. Because I need to remind you that God is protecting your coast that you have enlarged. I'm going to say it again. When you go way out into the deep, they call for two things, the Navy and the Coast Guard. But you cannot be coasting with God and expect when you get into the deep for him to rescue you. You cannot be coasting and putting coasters on the table, drinking wine, and that's all you're doing. Not on fire and expecting to deliver because you will implode immediately. Before you can even get to your voyage to the bottom of the depths of where he's taking you. That ain't just harping on a present event. I'm from Issachar by way of Judah. Those that understand the times. Anything that impacts a whole nation. Shouldn't there be some kind of interpretive meaning that we can extrapolate from the theology of God? Tell somebody, say, I got a sneaking suspicion that what you're about to dive into, you will neither implode nor explode. You may be in a tight place while you're going down. But you will get to the bottom. I'll interpret that in a moment when I get started. So I've watched these miracles here. And all I was doing, in each case, didn't do it all by myself. I had people around me praying. But I kept saying, Brother Tommy said there was a, a woman that had an issue in, of sickness and Dr. Young Yi Cho had a meeting with her about her condition and he said to her what I want you to do while you're waiting over these 21 days is, call, is to call the name of Jesus stand up and proclaim that name and do that a thousand times before you get to where you're going to and in each one of those situations, I just walked around or sat down and just saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You can join me if you want to. Jesus, 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 for whatever you're going through right now. Just Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just Je- don't say nothing else but Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, come on. There's a, it still works. Jesus, come on. We ain't going to have that standard. They ain't, we ain't going to have a name like that. 
and go down. Just say it. Just Jesus. If it's a job, just say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And when I first started saying that, I was quiet. But the places I was in, there was a few folk around me. I got a little bit loud. I felt my help come. I just said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because sometimes you need to praise him until somebody hears you. Jesus, Jesus. You need to call that name like you're not ashamed of him. You need to come on a little bit loud and let me hear you say, Jesus. This ain't a tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor nothing. Uh, this between you and God. I dare you to just say, let that rise now Jesus 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 let that rise uh, all over the world let that rise all over the hospital uh, all in the courtrooms in the jail cells uh, all in television somebody cry Jesus 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 uh, Jesus 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 we got in the name of Jesus uh, we got the victory in the name of Jesus Satan would have to flee Jesus 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 do it Jesus, Jesus, come on, let him hear you one more time. Jesus, 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 yeah, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Found myself saying, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name shall be saved. Let me hear you say it, Jesus. My God. Like you want something, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, one more time. We about to translate, Jesus, Jesus. No other help I know. Sounding mighty good, y'all. Savior, Savior, Savior. You may be seated if you want to, but you don't have to. Savior, it's on that pack wall, an acronym, Savior. Shepherd, advocate, victor, intercessor, offering, redeemer, Savior. a wonderful counselor he's a doctor never lost a patient he's a lawyer never lost a case see you savior just in case somebody's sick in your body healer 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 Whatever your condition, healer, healer, out of breath, your back hurt, your feet hurting. Healer, healer, you can't stand but a minute. Well, while you're watching us, at least say healer so you'll have more stamina. Healer, healer, healer. Healer, healer, healer. children from children's church is children's week i don't need the old window window keep our children for they can finish the race stretch your hands as they come up Give 
give me a little volume. Give me a little volume here. Jesus, Jesus. Just watch me lift your hands, one hand to God and his children. Come on, with all that's going on with children, don't pop out on me here. At home, stretch your hands in this purple majesty. My God, purple of God. Come on, praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him with your hands. Praise Him as I lay my hands on Him. Savior. Thank you, singers. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, come on. Don't, 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 don't take that lightly. Don't take that lightly. Don't take that. Come on, give me a little bit more if you can in my monitor, please, if it's possible. Hallelujah. Come on, that ain't on some the cute act. Somebody please give God a hand of praise. No, they didn't have palm branches. They had the palm of my hand as a branch. Come on, let's give God a hand that our children are covered, please. That's cute. Give God a hand of praise. Like if the devil have any plots and plans to try to destroy them, it has already failed. Will you give God a hand of praise? One final shout, please. Will you make some Holy Ghost noise here? For the name of Jesus, out of the mouth of babes, they've been praising God all week long. Somebody make some Holy Ghost noise one last time and we'll move. I said somebody make some Holy Ghost noise one last time. Amen. 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 Let's, let's move on for the things of God. I'm going to get toward the regular scheduled topic, but I do want to always give you update, breaking news on things that are happening in the earth realm for Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Your life is based upon not the logo, but the proceeding word of God. It's called the rhema word. The Lord is good. Amen. And while in prayer, I, like you, have been thinking about the state of the earth and all the things that are overwhelming us in the last days and trying to make some connectivity uh, prophetically before I go logistically the logos in the word of God uh, words spoken in season how good it is always bearing in mind that we are the children of Issachar now somebody say I don't know about this, this this whole children's message don't think I'm just talking about children because really all of us are the children of God right that's why I need you to broaden and enlarge your territory for Romans says they that are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God and we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we receive the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Somebody just say, Abba, Father. The spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Romans 8, 14. Everybody say, we are the children of God. Now, those children that came across here, there was somebody's children. may not have been your child, but they're somebody's child. Amen? But in the Bible, Romans says that we are the children of God. So it's Children's Week. Why don't you give God a praise that you are a child of God? Oh, come on. And if children, Romans says, then we are heirs of God. And if heirs of God, we are 
joint heirs, and if we get that threefold thing going, children, heirs, and joint heirs, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that's about to be revealed in us. Now, one of the things the Lord said before I go into my topic is about prophetic travel. We were talking about, and we can bring up prophetic travel uh, over the last months. There have been some things happening in the earth realm that we need to be mindful of. I was given an acronym during Safe Summer about uh, the heat, an acronym, heaven eliminating all adverse travel and circumstances and tragedies. Well, one of the things I've noticed in three realms that there is a common denominator that we've got to watch the travel realm. Number one, as we bring that up, uh, there's uh, those uh, that's uh, ascending. So this travel uh, caution, a prophetic, I'm calling it uh, uh, a prophetic travel revelation. I want to call it prophetic travel warning, but prophetic travel revelation, right? So many of you are traveling, you're going to and fro like ain't nothing going to happen. We ain't trying to scare you. We're just giving the word of the Lord. So as it relates to uh, right now what's on the world's mind, all attention months ago was toward ascension in heaven, going to the moon, taking people up, paying all kind of money to get to the moon. But, but look at your neighbor and say, you, you, you travel in the heavenlies every day. I think you do, don't you? When you go into the heavenly places, there can be warfare. I won't preach this. Second Corinthians, Paul says, uh, because of the abundance of revelation that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the message of Satan to buffet me, uh, because he says, and I was called up in the third heaven. Uh, will you thank God right now that as you're in your prayer time, your worship time, whether private or corporate, that there will be no unnecessary casualty or fatalities as a result of your prayer in ascending to the third heaven. Even if you have to go, come on, give God a praise right now. All emphasis, all emphasis on people traveling, ascending to the heavenly realm. Secondly, they just passed a law in the state of Alabama concerning earth travel. That is driving, driving in the earth. So you are a driver, aren't you? Yeah, you're going to drive out some demons, aren't you? You're going to cast out some demons. So here's what they said about driving in the earth realm. Number one, uh, if you're driving the interstates of uh, Alabama, and if you have uh, some kind of communication in your home, your arms, they will ticket you. Amen. So they're getting warnings about travel in the earth realm, driving. Uh, and they are in particular, A, distracted driving. B, drunk driving. C, dizzy. Whether you're dizzy because you're under medication and you fall asleep under the wheel. Or uh, D, as you are just speeding because your destiny, can, you can try to get somewhere too quickly. As children of God, we got to be mindful that we don't try to get to where we're going too quickly. Speed driving, come on somebody, that you don't start casting out demons that you're not ready for because there was one called the seven sons of Sceva that tried to cast out demons and the demons responded back and said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but you are not registered, we don't know who you are. So be mindful of trying to just drive out demons too quickly. And then there's, in our city, we've been encountering in the city of Birmingham, exhibition driving. They can't seem to get a handle of that. People on back roads, don't care what they tell them, they are, they are driving uh, just to be uh, on exhibit, an exhibition, a man display. So whatever you're driving, whether you're driving a car or driving a demon, you better not be trying to put it on ex exhibit to talk about, look at what I'm driving, because pride goes before destruction and a halted spirit. So if you got a new car, if you got a new job, uh, if you got a new disk drive, you better be thanking God right now that you are not distracted while you are driving. Will you look at your name and say, I will have no distraction uh, while God is driving me to where I'm about to go. No distractions. So don't be talking to people while God's driving you. Communicate. Put your communication down and talk to God. Some people just dizzy, drunk in their own success. And then here's the last one, the one that we uh, recently experienced that broke all of our hearts. And we want to be very sensitive as well as prayerful to the submersion and those that went down into the sea. That just broke all of our hearts, did it not? Yeah, it did. So there are people trying to go up in the heavenlies. People are trying to go across the earth. But last and most recent thing told us to be warm, mindful of people that's trying to go down. Whatever you're trying to go down, because before the fruit can go upward, the seed has to go downward. 
But you better be mindful in your voice. No matter how deep you try. Because some people say, oh man, oh, that brother's deep. But if you're deep, you better make sure uh, you know what you're about to go down to. Because one thing they told us about uh, the avoidance that, that lost people before they even get to the bottom. That the pressure at the bottom is so intense that they didn't even have to wait on that implosion or explosion. An uh, hour and 45 minutes as they were going down, they had already lost oxygen. There are people here right now, I wish I had time to teach, on the depths of God. There's just a concept called the depths of God. Right? Paul says, I am persuaded that neither height nor depth. Romans 11.33 says, oh, the depths of his wisdom. Psalm 130, like the 12th Psalm of the sense says, out of the depths of my soul have I cried. There is a part of your DNA called the depths. So if you're trying to be deep, want to know where God came from and where Cain and all that, you might be getting too deep. So if you're going to go that deep, and want to try to, and I'm not throwing shade on the Titanic, and try to discover what happened to a sink, a ship that had already sunk. I can see if the ship was at the bottom and folk were still alive, but it's a ship that's dead. Why you keep trying to go down in deep places with folk that ain't got no life in them? Some of you scare me with the people that you got on your voice. The voyage to the sea, this prophetic picture, represents the depth. And one of the things that breaks our heart is you got to mind, be mindful of who you take with you. You can't take everybody with you where you're going because it may be a death trip for you. And don't let anybody take you with them because they may be on a death trip. So when people start tripping, tell them you're going to trip by yourself because they ain't tripping with you. Oh, come on, come on. You see saints tripping. You see preachers tripping. You see elders tripping. You're going to trip by yourself. I'm not going on that trip because it may cost my life. just out of prayer and be on their voyages all levels of people gathered to go on their trip to go down it was very expensive look at your name and say it's expensive to trip $250,000 and you want me to get on that tight ship confined it ain't even enough room for you in it. Word has it that some, a couple of people were invited on the trip and they decided not to go. You can't go everywhere with everybody. And sometimes people want to be hurt and they want you to lick the wound. Tell them, I, I can't go there with you. I just cannot go there with you. Talking about the boss. I can't go there with you. So they took on that submersion. They, there was a father on the trip. There was a son on the trip. There were friends on the trip. There were rich folk on the trip. All kind of folk. What kind of folk you got on your trip? If it survived, you had a wonderful time if you make it down there. But the pressure is intense. The higher you go down or the higher you go up, the pressure is intense. I've seen people trip, trip in ministry. They take their family members, they go tripping. They take the children, they go tripping. Let me leave that alone. Tell somebody you're going to trip by yourself if you trip. Amen. Amen. That's why we say stuff like, I'll go if I have to go. Let's get to the word of the Lord, children's week. I don't know how long this uh, thesis will last, but let me get to now the regular scheduled program that was breaking news. I, it's children's week, 
So somebody say, I thank God that I'm a child of God. Just say, I thank God I'm a child of God. Say it again. I thank God that I am a child of God. So we're talking, laid hands on the children, from the throne, children's, we can bring that up on both screens if possible, children's divine protection. What does that mean? On the screen, it means baskets and not caskets. Now, when I first introduced this concept, it was around Easter time. We introduced uh, giving eggs away and since the time uh, uh, egg prices have gone down. Uh, we did grocery giveaway and we gave out flyers telling them at a later date we would deal with a spirit called baskets and not caskets. We're ready to do that in the week leading into it is the vision that the Lord gave that we see baskets. Tell somebody I see baskets over you and not caskets. Second thought would be the shepherd's order. The shepherd's order. Not order as in a command, but could be. But since we're dealing with every form of Psalm 23 in the year, what? 2023, since we've been dealing all year long with the first half, this will be the last one, the shepherd's order. The word shepherd, what we have not dealt with is the word shepherd. The Lord is my, the Lord is my, the Lord is my shepherd. We want to camp out on that. I shall not want. The word shepherd, if you're taking notes, is the Hebrew word poimen, not poison, because there's no poison in his son. It means, shepherd means to feed, to lead, to steer, and to guide. So somebody said, well, Pastor, I really don't need you. I can go straight to God. That's because you don't understand fractions very well, how God breaks the shepherds down into many dimensions. He is the chief shepherd, but he gives special crowns to the under shepherd that will take care of his sheep. I know I got at least one crown when I get to heaven. I know I got one. To be 41 years in West End with Negroes, Changing and coming and going, that's a crown. I don't care what you say about me, what you think about me, there is a shepherd's crown. Amen. God. Well, that's a yes, sir, and a couple. You give God a praise for the shepherds. I didn't say a howling. Real shepherd's going to get a crown. That's kind of cute. Well, you give God a praise, First Peter, for shepherds. Oh, you now see. Now, see, you'll get to heaven and see the chief shepherd, and you'll be there on road three billion back on that bucket and uh, the shabaki, and oh, there go this shepherd, oh, there go this shepherd. But you ain't said nothing about your earthly shepherd. Jesus said stuff like this. He had seen me, has seen the Father. When you saw me, you saw the shepherd. I'm not God, but I'm an extension of his office. And some of the things that you would say to me, you wouldn't dare say if the Lord was bringing a vision. you got a revelation problem but I'm going to help you so the shepherd's order so the shepherd is not a short order cook he's got some orders and his order what he's ordering and what God's ordering him to do is to do what on that second line to feed the lamb and the sheep to do what to feed to feed the lamb and the sheep, what you just saw coming through the lay hand, those were the lambs of God. They ain't got no problem with them. It's the sheep where the trouble come in. Now. Jesus said, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep and feed my what? Lamb, the, the sheep, the, the lamb don't mind being fed. They'll feed you. I was over there watching an oxymoron with the kids on Thursday night, sitting in the middle of the floor. They had all kinds of chocolate treats. They had potato chips, Doritos, sour cream, cheese. And, uh, you know, I just went ahead. I ain't sure they had washed their hands. I said, I'm going to have to plead Mark 16 on this one. <laughs> I don't know if they've just been scratching, boogled or whatever. All I know before I can uh, get by, I was already a chip in, uh, in my mouth. 
They didn't ask me if I like it. But first chips was good. Doritos, that tastes good. Then that was sour cream. That's, then all of a sudden, one of them put uh, some cheddar. I said, that's cheese. But it was already in my mouth. And then I realized sometimes when you're the feeder, it doesn't matter if people like what you're feeding. It doesn't matter if you don't like what I feed. Just open your mouth wide. Psalm 8110. God said, and I will feed you. Oh, y'all are getting quiet on me. That's all right. I'm going to preach this thing. So the shepherd's order is to feed the lamb and the sheep. And last but not least, I want to tie all this in together with a thought called deliverance from anxiety. Deliverance from anxiety. Now, I bet you I caught you there because everybody in here is anxious about something. There's some on your plate that you are not looking forward to that day. It could be surgery. It could be court. It could be the last day you at work. It could be the pink slip that the husband and serve you or the wife. But there's something that's got you anxious. And a good shepherd that feeds you will deliver and get all of the anxiety off of you. I'm getting ahead of myself. In First Peter, you'll see as I talk about the different forms of shepherd, he tells them to feed the flock of God that he's made you oversight of, uh, not, not for filthy lucre, uh, uh, not by constraint. Strength, uh, and he was going to say, You younger ones, submit yourselves to the older one. And he was going to say, And cast all of your care upon the Lord. That's anxiety. So if you're going to get rid of your anxieties, there is a correlation uh, between anxiety, stress, panic, and a shepherd. It's only the shepherd can bring you to peace for what you are about to leap into. He anoints your head with oil. He leads you beside the still, calm, quiet waters. So when he puts his hands on you, you're able to go to sleep. Won't you give God a praise for not being worried about nothing because the Lord is your shepherd will somebody give God a praise for still waters those things that you are apprehensive about concerned about troubled about perplexed about amen this may be more of a teaching anointing but let's look at the key scriptures even if we don't get to all of them these are the ones that we would love to peruse in Psalm 23 1 talks about the Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, 1. Amos 8, 2 will support a statement I'm going to make later about the beginning of the next three months. You are entering to a zone called summer fruit. Look at your name and say, you're getting ready to get some summer fruit. And the nature you're going to find about summer fruit, when people grow the fruit, they can't eat all of it. They put it in a jar and seal it and they call the seal fruit what oh y'all got it preserve the summer fruit is god's guarantee and promise that all that he don't do for you because he came that you might have life and have it abundantly he is going to preserve you oh my god tell somebody you must not hear what he said you, he is going to preserve you because you are living edible active fruit do I need to say it scripturally? The preserve of God is being set into motion. Thessalonians says, pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. First Thessalonians 5, 17 uh, through 23. Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. In everything, give God thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Despise not prophesying. Quench not the spirit. Abstain and shun the very appearance of evil. Right? And the very God of peace. 24, 23. First Thessalonians 5, 23. First Thessalonians, you can bring it up. First Thessalonians 5, 23, 24 says, And the very God of peace. No anxieties. All those steps leads to your peace and it breaks your anxiety. And the very God of peace sanctifies you. On the screen, first Thessalonians 5, 23, on both. May the very God of peace sanctify you, holy, your whole spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved. You're waiting on the second half of the year. But God's not going to wait in December. He's going to preserve you. He's going to give you what you've not graduated from now. He's going to preserve you. Not only is he going to preserve you, he's going to preserve you. Your whole spirit, 
soul and body be preserved until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, why? For faithful is he. Somebody said, you're not going to be able to get there because you ain't faithful. No, you need to read verse 24. You don't have to be, but he is. For faithful is he that is calling you. Well, if you don't shout right here, I'm on this B part. I'm going to come off this stage. For faithful is he that is calling you also, and he will also do it. I dare you to say to God, go ahead and do it. Everything I cannot do that you're calling me to prosperity. You're calling me to preach. God, you do what I cannot do. Will you please give God a praise that he has preserved you and kept you alive so he can do it. Oh, you ought to give God a better praise right there. You ought to give God a praise right there. That summer preserves. He is not calling you to what you can do. He's calling you to what he can do. Your problem is you're always trying to do everything. Okay. Amos 8, 2 called that summer fruit. We'll look at them. Uh, uh, in a moment, John 21 talks about maturity feeding. There is a place where God feeds you to bring you to a place of maturity. Maturity feeding, you'll find out, is when God leads you to places where when you were young, you did your thing. But when he feeds you, Peter, you can whenever you want to. He says, you're going to a place where you'll only go where I tell you to go in John. Fourth scripture, Acts 20, verse 32 uh, through John 10. 20, 28 through 32 talks about, here comes his, his, where it gets crazy at. It talks about, in Acts 20 and John 10, wolf preventing feeding. Oh, wolf preventing. I am not feeding you because I'm concerned about the sheep. I'm feeding you because there are wolves coming. In John 10, 10, say the thief coming not before the steal, kill, and destroy. But it says the wolf... The hireling sees the wolf coming, and he flees. How many are glad that Jesus is not a hireling? But the wolf will come. We have to be mindful of wolves. Wolf feeding, wolf prevention. Everybody say wolf prevention feeding. There is a feeding from shepherds that prevents wolves from sneaking in to tear up what you are nurturing, the wool that you're trying to grow. Acts 20, 28, if I don't make it. First Peter 5, I talked about a moment ago about deliverance from anxiety. He talks about the chief shepherd, Peter. See, there are what's called the pastoral epistles. These are pastoral epistles where you see the names mentioned. Titus, Timothy, right? Peter. Those are pastoral. These are letters from the prism of a shepherd. They are pastoral. There are the church epistles where he's writing to the church. They're the Ons family. Galatians, Romans, Ephesians, Colossians, Thessalonians. Those are letters written to the churches. But when this guy, for real, when you read Timothy and Titus, can I help you? He ain't even talking to you. He's talking to pastors. So when he says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear. If you ain't a pastor, he ain't even talking to you. He's talking to pastors whose assignment is so strong that Nero principalities is ready to chop your head off. And Timothy is afraid and God, Paul writes to him in Timothy, in uh, 1 Timothy 1 and 3, abide in Ephesus. Timothy said, I'm out of here on the first thing smoking. Paul writes him again. He says, Timothy, you may be acting like a coward, but the faith that was in your mom and your grandmama, they were never scared. So God, and I'm persuaded that the same faith, that is a pastoral epistle that you can eavesdrop in it. When he says, fight the good fight of faith, he ain't talking to you. He's talking to a pastor. Amen. What are you saying to me? He's telling you Christ that redeemed you from the curse. What he's saying to you, Ephesians, for by grace are you saved through faith. 
What he's saying to you in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, give thanks unto the Father who delivered you from the power of darkness. But when the pastors, we have every right to be afraid. But God, and you are a pastor or a shepherd of some level. Amen. Because the, the holy calling is on your life. So we have to really, really watch those words that uh, we don't get anxiety about all that goes on with church. And then the last one in Isaiah 40 talks about uh, he shall feed his flock. Now this is to the flock. He shall feed his flock. Have you? You read that, right? Isaiah 40? I'm just going over it. We may not make it back to the I-40. It's one of the most powerful chapters in the Bible, Isaiah 40. It starts with stuff like this, Isaiah 40. Speak comfort to my people. Speak comfort and tell her that her warfare is accomplished. In other words, here's a word to the church. The battle that you are fighting is already over. Oh, come on. This is what the shepherd says to the flock. Tell her that the battle is already over. I'll get to verse 11 where you're trying to go. Speak comfort. Tell her that the warfare is accomplished. And she has received double for her trouble. Have you ever had God punish you? And he, he chasing you years ago and people still trying to get you to have a double jeopardy to be tried for the same thing. See, I've watched saints. Saints will bring up your past and try to condemn you about something that God had already cleansed. And you done got a double punishment for it. But they keep bringing it up. And God's through with that. That's Isaiah 41 through 3. So tell her, when you know that you receive chastening from the Lord, somebody say, you're saying you can do whatever you want to get away with. I'm saying something God chases you. And once the whipping is over, is that what happened with your children? You don't keep going back three and four weeks and they already, and one day the child walks home and did nothing, got straight A's, and you just start going off saying, what's this for? This is what you did three months ago. I thought I got a whipping for that. So the next step after the receiving double, Isaiah 40, verse 1 through 3, is tell her that every valley shall be exalted. Every low place in your life is getting ready to be exalted. Low money, low friends, low down, and every mountain, everything that's too high, I'm getting ready to bring it down. Every rough place shall be made smooth. Every crooked place that it took you too long, you're going straight to it. And then he gets to the place and says, how does this happen? He tell him the word of the Lord because the, the grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord abides forever. Well, you thank God. I don't care who gave you flowers and necklaces and, and Mother's Day and Father's Day. What kind of gifts you got and who celebrate you? It don't last but a day even if you get it. It's out the house in three days. But what's going to keep your house and your children? It's not the bracelet. It's not the trophy. It's the word of the Lord that abides. Will you please give God a praise for the word of the Lord? And then it makes a statement you can bring up in Isaiah 40, 11. He shall feed his flock. The shepherds is to feed the flock of God, which is the lamb and the sheep. And carry the little ones. In his bosom. That means the shepherd has what right, not only to feed you, but to break you and to slow you down. Then we bring it up, Isaiah 40, 11. He shall feed simultaneously on the screen for those at home. If you can bring that up, Isaiah 40, 11. He shall feed. The operative word is feed. He shall, let's read now. He shall what? He shall feed, feed his flock. Whose flock is it? He, he shall feed his flock. His flock. Like a shepherd. Like a shepherd. Like a shepherd. A natural shepherd. And do what? He shall gather the lambs. I'm going to talk about the process a little bit later. The first thing is he gathers. The first thing about shepherd is do you gather for feeding time? And gather? The lamb. Oh, the lamb. Not the sheep. Gather what? The lambs. The lambs. With his arm. With his arms. He picked them up in his arm. There's a place where God's just got to carry you for a while. In his arms, not on his side, in his arm. Why? So you can feel the heartbeat of God again. Right up to his chest like John. And he carries the little lambs in his bosom. In his bosom. And shall gently lead and those. Gently lead those. Just real gently lead those that are with, with young. That are with young. That are drawing from the breast. Right? Breastfed. Keep going. 
Who had measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? I'm going to leave that alone. I just need to, I mean, really. I used to stop reading. I wouldn't go to that B part, but that's the meat of it. God's got more water in the hollow of his hand than the Mediterranean Ocean. I mean, you don't have to read it. You don't have to just stop what I just said. All that ocean and all them ships that was trying to dig to the depth, God's got all that in his hand. So when he lays his hand, he drowns the enemy. You can't even measure how much water in his hands. Therefore, when a pastor is an extension of the hand, lay their hands on you, it drowns the enemy's plans out. You can't even measure Every drought in your life will be broken by the flood of my hands. I'm going to try that one again. You must not hear. When all you got drying up, health drying up, money drying up, friends drying up. And you're talking about you don't need a shepherd. Who hath what now? Who had measured the waters in the hollow of his hands. There is a hole. I'm going to try not to get too much revelation. <laughs> Lord help us. You know when they nailed Jesus to the cross. There were some nails. That went through his hand. It left a hole in it. God filled the holes with the water. Boy I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Once the nails came out, the water came in. And that's when he said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit. The spirit is coming out of his hands. You catching this? You catching this? I want to tell you right now, if you're sanctified, go ahead and lay your hands on somebody right now. Just gently. Just lay hands. You ain't got to touch them. Don't be doing too much. They should lay hands. God will release the flood where things are hollow. Where they are shallow, where there is nothing there, that's where the Spirit of God comes in. Yeah, please, somebody praise him right there. Well, it don't stop there as a shepherd. It goes even deeper than that. In verse 29, it goes to ask a series of questions. I'll do it. I, it's not in my notes, but I'm going to go ahead and ask these questions, presuming that you already know the answers. Have you not known? Have you not heard? One translation said, ain't nobody told you this yet? That God's got more water in his hand than all of the seven continents around the sea? Have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of all the ends of the earth, fainteth not, and neither is he weary. You may be tired, but he is not. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint. For even the youth shall faint, children shall faint, and grow weary. Young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up, not to the moon. They go to the heavens. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those are the key scriptures. Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's read quickly Amos 8 and 2. We'll go quickly Amos 8 and 2 just so you look at them. Amos 8 and 2 that uh, talks about summer fruit. Amos 8 and 2. Summer fruit. Tell somebody, you're getting ready to get some summer fruit. This is not winter fruit. This is not Easter Passover fruit. This is not, this is fruit that God promised in a basket for you. Eight and two, quickly. We're going to be moving fast. Eight and two. What does it say? And he said, Amos, what seest thou? What do you see, prophet? What did he say? And I said. I said. A basket of summer fruit. I see a basket of summer fruit. Uh, oh, not caskets. I see a basket of summer fruit. Uh, whatever you are going to get that's coming out of this, you must get by Labor Day. You must get before fall. Will you give God a praise for three months of summer fruit? In a basket. Oh my God, come on, come on, come on, come on, please. Summer fruit. Summer, if my mind, the solar stuff on June 22nd, here's the thing about summer. 
Summer's kind of crazy. You think, man, it's, it's going to be all these long days. Now, the solstice on, on Tuesday, summer, the first day of it means that's the longest day of the year. From that day forward, the length of day starts going down and the length of night starts going up from the first day of summer. So whatever you're going to do, you better get ready to do it right now because every day the sun is going to start going down. But I'm going to tell you the sun of righteousness, uh, summer fruit is about to be released from June the 21st to July, from July to August, from August to September. I release a crazy basket between now and September the 22nd this entire summer in the continental United States of America. May God give you stuff you've been planning, but it's just getting ready to hit this summer. crazy you ain't got to believe it just receive it you ain't got to know it just show it John 20 notice what Jesus says real quickly about maturity feeding I want to get some folk that ain't just looking for just fruit and cars and houses and wings and things John 21 is at the end of Jesus ministry John 21 15 through 18 let's read this is incredible stuff about the order the shepherd's order is to feed I have an order to feed you Read it for me quickly, John 21, 15. So when they had dined, when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Jesus called him by his whole name, Simon Peter. Keep going, please. Simon, son of Jonas. And I called him by his pedigree, Simon Barjona. Love is well, now Simon Peter, that's his first name, right? The one his daddy gave and the one Jesus gave him, Simon and Peter. But then son of Jonah with bar Jonah, don't mean he took, we took the bar exam. That means his daddy, he's a son of John. Because you can't get your fruit without knowing who your daddy is. Simon bar Jonah. Once you cross this bar of knowing who your father is, you can go where you're supposed to go. Well, it's getting quiet, it's getting quiet. I'm going to make some people nervous when I get through today, but that's all right. I got to get the wolves out. Keep going. Love is thou me more than these. Oh, Jonah, do you love me more than these? If so, let's keep going. More than. We know it's a, he's talking to more than uh, conference church because we see the word. More than. You love me what? More, more than, than these. these. What did he say? He said unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Now, you're going to see the word love six times. He's going to ask Simon by Jonah, love, the word that he's using to describe love is agape. He's asking him three agape questions. Do you love me unconditionally? Peter's first two answers is going to be phileo. I phileo you, I like you, but I don't agape you. Jesus was trying to get him to an agape answer from an agape question. But his first two answers was phileo. Like most saints, they like God, as long as everything is going all right, but they don't love him unconditionally. They don't say stuff like, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. If you cross them, you'll find out they don't really love you. They like you. Then go on. Keep on going. He said unto him, feed my lamb. Okay, if you love me, feed my lamb. lamb. Okay, that's the little ones. Children's week. Number two. He said to him again the second time. The second time. Simon, son of Jonah. Simon, son of Jonah. No, keep calling his daddy's name. What? Love is thou me. Love is thou me. Do you love me? He said unto him, yeah, Lord. Now, wait a minute. You didn't ask me the same thing twice. If God asked you the same uh, second question, he's trying to get to something. You, you asked me him, but you ain't got it yet, but you'll get it by midnight. And what he said? Thou knowest that I love you thee. You know I love you. You know I like you. That Jesus is going to keep on till he get what he want. Next, what did he say? He said unto him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Okay, keep going. He said unto him the third time. Oh, no. Why? Because by two or three witnesses, every word has to be established. He asked him the third time. Simon, son of Jonas, love is thou mean? Do you agape me? And this answer was, Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, love is thou mean? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. 
Thou knowest that I love thee. You know I love you. He finally got to the point. Can I tell you something? The agape is not going to come out of you until you get frustrated. You will not get an agape until God frustrates you. Until you're tired of your boss asking the same question. Until you're tired of your children asking you, how long are we going to live with these rats and roses? Until you, come on. It's agape. It takes a series of questions to get the agape out of you. maturity feeding it's getting quiet isn't it are y'all still with me gp let's keep going you won't teach jesus on. said unto him feed my sheep feed my sheep now here comes the interpretation of that dialogue verily verily i say unto thee this is what a god people do when thou was young when you was a child thou girded children thou. you girded yourself and you walk as whether thou wouldest. You went wherever you wanted to go, whenever you want to go, did it. You stood tall and you did it all. And you did it my way. But he said, uh-uh, when you grow up, when you get mature, that's going to change. The purpose of, of feeding is to mature you so it's not your way. the last book in John what did he say but when thou shalt be old when you get old mature, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand you're going to stretch forth your hand and another shall gird thee another shall gird you and carry thee whether thou wouldest you're going to stretch your hand and they're going to nail you what's called a St. Peter's cross St. Andrew's cross and you go into a place that you never thought you would be, take that kind of pain before oh I ain't got to take this who they think they fool because you steal the child Maturity feeding. Keep going. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify he God. He was talking about the whole purpose of the love is to get you ready for what he's getting ready to kill in your life. Oh, you're ready to receive what he's blessed, but what about those areas that he's going to kill in your life? Kill. Ain't nothing been about, about killing, is it? I thought that's a bad word. Acts 1 and 8. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power not to become the leader, not to become uh, credit able, power to be my witness, Acts 1 and 8. And the word witness is the word matereo. That is to die for something that you didn't even do. A martyr's death. The power of the Holy Ghost is not to bless you, but it's to kill you. Oh. Oh, please don't say that. I thought you said the thief coming not but for the steal. Uh -uh. God don't have to steal because he owns you. You steal it when it's not yours. They shutting down on me. God help me. I ain't even halfway through. Help us. That's maturity feeding. Please go ahead and read the rest of that. And, we're gonna and when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Follow me. If you're going to follow me. If you're going to follow me. There's a one line I heard on The Chosen the other day that I've never heard before. They got that series going. Y'all been watching it? Y'all been watching it? It's something other than Lifetime, other than sports. Y'all watching? Chosen. Good stuff. Well, what y'all watching if y'all ain't watching? What y'all watching? They said, we watching you, Pastor. That's what we doing. We got eyes on you. No, they made a statement, and I'll say it on leadership tonight. Jesus said to his disciples, he says, follow me. He said, I only ask my followers and disciples to do hard things. I only ask much of my disciples. I, on, I always ask much of my disciples, but I only ask little of those that are not my disciples. Does that make sense? If you're not one of my disciples, I ain't going to ask much out of you because you ain't following me for real. I ask much. Oh, every time you do, he's doing something. He's going to jazz. We got to Birmingham rally. He, he got a basketball. I only, if that don't fit you, that's okay. You are not my disciple. I ask much of those that are disciplined enough to hear my voice. I ask very little for those that are not my disciple. I ain't asked you to do nothing. But those 400 that's going to be on that call tonight, I'm asking a lot of you. Somebody said, you may ask it, but you sure ain't going to get it. That's obvious. Let's keep going. All right. That's material. Read the rest of that. Then Peter, turning about, 
See the disciple whom Jesus loved following. Jesus, wait a minute. There's so much stuff. I wish I could do a move on this. Then Peter did what? Turn he turned around. around. Now, now what? Why he got to look? What did he do? He went around, turned around, and did what? Looked at the disciple. Read that again. I, this is very key revelation because it's happening right here more than conquerors. Then Peter turning about, see the disciple whom Jesus oh, loved. Wait a minute. That word love again. He didn't ask a lot of Peter. And Peter throws shade and said, well, you asking me to do all this. Why don't you ask the one that you love so much to do it? Oh, that'll hurt you. That'll hurt you. That'll hurt you. He just got through with this dialogue, and he turned around and started crossing his eyes at John because you love him so much. Why don't you ask him to die for you? Boy, this is crazy. This is maturity feeding. Well, you're asking me to come and go to the rally. Why don't you ask your boy Wendell? He wasn't eating chicken with you every day. Why don't you ask Carrie? You say he the one y'all who you love each other. Why don't you ask him to do it? Because we always throw in shade because we ain't been fed. And when God asks you to do something, you got to look at somebody else because you are insecure within yourself. If they gave somebody else a raise and you've been there 20 years, did you not read the parable of the vineyard? One went at the third hour, another came in at the sixth hour, another came in at the eleventh hour, and the man that came in at the eleventh hour got the same thing that the man went in at the third hour. That's what's going on right now in this place. There are people walking in that's got anointing that may run circles around you. Are you okay with that? Now we look at that full cross side. And Jesus told him, I mean, he done friend Peter, you don't love me for real. You won't go nowhere I ask you to go. You don't follow me nowhere but the church. So if you get somebody that'll say, I'll go anywhere with you, you gotta have a motive, right? Oh, it's getting quiet in here. I'm just talking about the short order just to feed you. There are some folk. That they love God enough to follow the leader. They believe in the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. You believe in the Lord, but you don't believe in Gideon. Please, let's go to the next verse. That's maturity feeding. Is the next one called wolf prevention feeding? Acts 20. Let's go back. What's the next step? Acts let's, 20. Wolf prevention. Feeding. Let's break those up again. One more time. Wolf prevention Feeding. feeding. Now, as a good shepherd, this we're talking about the shepherd. We've talked about tables and all. We're just talking about the shepherd. Now, we got to fess up with something. Gathering among us and among your, your following, it is possible for you to have attracted wolves. At the same time, you're looking for an inheritance. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. John 10, 10 says, The thief coming out for the steel, kill, destroy, I'm coming that you might have life. It says, The hireling sees the wolf coming and he catches the sheep but the hireling leaves and he flees people run because they were not the, they were not the one in the first place will you stop reading other, will you bring that up for me John 10 10 real quick John 10 10 I just want to make sure I ain't picking on that we're about to go into war prevention hang with me now because children I ain't even gotten into the thought yet of what this thing about so hang with me they've got to go quick John 10 10 before they can see it John 10 10 on the screen what does it say the thief coming not but for but to, to steal, steal, to kill, and to destroy. And to destroy. Right, keep going. I am come that thy might have, have life, life and have it more abundantly. Abund overflowing life. Let's keep going. I am the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth life for the sheep. sheep. Right. But he that is in Harlan. He that is in Harlan. And not the shepherd. And not the shepherd. Whose own the sheep are not. They're not his. See the wolf coming. He sees who coming? The wolf. The wolf. The wolf is coming. He sees the wolf coming. And leave it the sheep. And he leaves the sheep. And flee it. And flee it. People and that run because they were never part of the flock. They were the wolf in sheep clothing. Now let's go to wolf prevention. Let's just say, well, what this got to do with my inheritance? It's got a lot to do with it, right? Remember I said, if children, then heirs. And if heirs, then what? Join heirs. But while you are trying to get your inheritance, there's a wolf trying to get you. Acts 20, please. 28. Acts 20, 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. 
This is what we tell pastors. Sometimes you're so busy watching people, and I'll be honest with you, I got enough thing going with my own life, with my own body, with my own health, with my own marriage, with my own children, with my own brothers and sisters, with my own church. I can't afford to be watching you. Who are you watching? Why don't you just take heed to yourself and get out of everybody else's business? I promise you, you got enough going on with yourself. Bobby, and take heed to yourself. Now, I don't know why he put this assignment on me. I got to watch over you. I'm saying, God, I barely can't keep me together. I barely can keep my family together. I get one, I'm right another one. I get those, I'm right the other one, like a balloon. Why did I have all these children? Get one member, right another one mad. But the first thing is take heed to what? Bobby Indian taught me this, guys. I've been, come on, I'm doing ministry training class, but I've been under ministry training class. I learned these kind of scriptures that take heed to what? To your, take care of you first. Self-preservation is the first law of nature. Now, we graduate from that because we're not in self-preservation. We ain't God preservation because God's going to preserve us. But take care of yourself first. Keep going. To all the flock. To all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost had made you the overseers. The Holy Ghost made you an overseer. Now, I would ask the average person in Birmingham or maybe in this flock if you would have made me the overseer. Probably not. By the time you get to looking at all my records, I'd probably be the one, I wouldn't be the one that you would choose to be the overseer. What that thing, overseer? To see over what you can't see. The Holy Ghost gave me that gift to oversee it. I didn't ask for it. He gave it to me. Oh, it's getting quiet. Eat the church of God. To feed the church of God. This is where those of you that's of the Koji, well, really, it's the, I mean, actually, Koji is church of God in Christ. But they were just a split off of the church of God. They both from the same tree. But racism wouldn't let the blacks worship with the church of God. So the blacks started a branch called the church of God. I'll teach you if you let me. I'll teach you. Church of God. It's the church of God. Let's keep going. Which he had purchased with his he own purchased blood. purchased with his own blood. And what? For I know this, that after my departing. Now, I know this, Paul said, apostle, that what? After my departing. Departure. As I go on a missionary journey when the boss is away. Shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Grievous wolves. Enter in. Will enter in. Among you. Among you. Not sparing the flock. Not sparing the flock. Either they fleecing the flock. Lying on the flock. Accusing the flock. Who they think they are. Where you have a responsibility to take every sheep and put them where they belong. It's alright if we put you where you belong. But when God used somebody that's got treasure in an earthen vessel and you know some about it, you think, Pastor, see now. I want to see now when I appointed you. Please keep going. I ain't getting much traction on this mess. Not sparing the flock. Not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise. Um, among you men shall arise. Speaking perverse things. Speaking perverse things. To draw away disciples to after draw them. Away, away disciples, disciples after them. After them. This is what a shepherd does. It, it guards to make sure that the ones you have raised and trained is not trying to establish their own flock to draw away after themselves. Get your head out of the sand and read the Bible, please. What else? Therefore, watch and remember. Watch and remember. That by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone. Wait a minute. He said, I've been doing this for three years to this place. Three years. Just three. Now, okay. Me, 41. But let's say his case. Just th he, For three years, he in the same place. He's giving prophetic warnings just like what I gave you. Every time you come together, I'm telling you what's going on. Paul said, I did that for three years. I've been doing this in Birmingham for 41 years. You think by accident I might have a little bit of knowledge of what I'm talking about? Watch this. I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. Crying about some of you. Some of your pains bring me tears sometimes. Funerals, your loved one, break your heart, break my heart. It ain't just my stuff that break my heart, it's your story. 
You think about it for real. There are people that we've had in a casket. When they die, see them, I'm crying. You don't even know they did. We even had a funeral. You only come to the funeral of people you know. Of people job. There are folk got situations sitting here right now, got stuff. Let me tell you something. Here's a conclusion. If you don't learn in them. The people that think it don't take all this and don't need the Lord, I want you to look me straight in my eyes. You are going to need him one day. I'm going to say this as best as I can. You are going to need him. And you're going to need him so much that you're going to do to him what he's been doing for you. you begging him. I've been in some situations where I've said, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please. Do not let my enemy triumph over me. I just, I know you favor me. Please, God, please, Lord, I beg you. Please, Jesus, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Jesus, I've been pleading for you to present your body as a living sacrifice. You are going to need him. Keep on. You ain't got to present your body. I promise you, circumstance is going to come to a place. You are going to need him because he will be the only one that can get you through what you're going. You are going to need him. Please, somebody, come on, sir. You are going to need him. I'm only going to say this today. You are going to need him. I didn't say you're going to want him. You are going to need him. Because if he don't speak, if he doesn't heal, if he doesn't provide, if he doesn't keep you, you're going to need him. Some of you already saying I mean. You need it. I found myself in some situations later. Go, God, I need you. I need you to triumph. I don't need the enemy to win this one. I need the victory. In the name of Jesus, I need the victory on this one. And I've watched God just turn the captivity. I wish I had. I, I just can't tell it all. I'm just talking about personally. While I'm preaching, while I'm laying hands on the sick, while I'm talking to mayors, I'm talking to mayors on one hand, going home crying about other situations. Is anybody here with me, see? You know why I'm here today? Three hours, because I need him. I've gone to the emergency room late in the midnight hour and didn't leave because that family needed me. And I wasn't leaving, leaving at 3 o'clock till it was over. You better hope if you get in trouble that I got the stamina to stay in an emergency room like I got the same stamina to stay in a church house. And I won't leave until I get an answer. I'm conditioned to stay in the same place until I get a breakthrough. I'm past wanting him. I need him, man. Jesus said to the woman at the well, I must needs go through Samaria. You needed to come through this place today. To a very difficult place in a season of my life, and there was a, there was two Steve Greens operating on the same at the same the three of them. One was a radio DJ, WAYE. The other was an artist. Well, that one ain't me. It could have been, but uh, one was an artist, and that was me. And all three things were happening at the same time. The DJ was playing the song by Steve Green, and I was there helping giving the word of the Lord. And he has a song out. Google it. Called "People Need the Lord." People need the Lord at the end of all their broken dreams. People need the Lord. And I would play that over and over and over. I, I, I thought I need him from 1973 to 94, but I realized I really, really need you. I need the old, I need thee, every, every hour, I need thee, oh bless me now, I say.
You got nobody else I can go to. I need. I need. Come on, let him hear you. Let him hear you. The all. Let him hear you. She's sounding good. Let him hear you. I need thee. Honey, between the time you leave here and you get back to church, there's so much can go on. You got to have your own prayer life then, right? Oh, bless. Right in this place I'm standing. Me now. really need him. I ain't talking about the rest of you. Just those that need him. Tell him, Lord, I come. Don't worry about who else didn't make it to him. I come. Pended and broken. Lord, I come. Brethren, I commend you to oh, God. Now he's got the wolves out. I go to give you some commendations, some awards. Those that didn't let the wolves take the sheep away. I commend you to God. To God. And to the word oh, of his Lord, grace. Try not to lose it. And to the word of his grace. That's charisma. Charismata, the charismania and the uh, charismatic of God, the grace to smoothly s s slip out of the wolf's hand where he thought he had you by the word of his grace, which is able to build you oh, up. Please, that word is able to build you up. Now, watch this last phrase. And, and give you an your inheritance. An inheritance among all them, them that are sanctified. sanctified. Your inheritance is based on your escaping the wolves. You cannot get the inheritance in you hanging with the wolf pack. Is that good? Please, one more. What's the next one? We're going to Phoebe. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I ain't after nobody's money. Every minister must make this decision. I ain't after the money. I ain't coveting. I don't care what you wear, what you drive, how much bling bling. I am not in competition with you at all. I ain't in competition with your church. I'm in members you got. I ain't looking at you. Talking about, I wish I drive like that. I ain't trying to travel like you. You can go to Timbo too if you want to. I'm here in Birmingham. I am happy. In the, I, when Jesus said, the chosen movement said, he says, I am that I am. But I am who I am. I am not who you're trying to be. I am. So stop trying to make me who you are. I am who I am. I am that I am. I covered the no man's silver or gold. Or apparel. Somebody said, don't you want a jet? No, I do not want a jet. Do you want to go to Africa? No, I do not. I'm among African Americans right here. I don't need to see no more Africans. Well, God's about to enlarge your territory. And I see you speaking to millions of people. I'm already speaking to millions of demons, legions at a time. It may be a million demons came in here today. I'm already talking to demons. Please keep going. Yea, ye yourselves know. You already know. That these hands have mentored, ministered unto my necessities. Yes. And to them that were with me. 
I have shown you all things. I've shown you all things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak yes. and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give it's than more blessed to, to give. It's more blessed to give. Why are you going to Jasper? Because it's more blessed. Why do I need to go to Africa when we got folk right up the highway and ain't got nothing? Take care of what's around you first. And I'm, see, here I am, for you'll know as a shepherd. Somebody said, why don't you start a church in, in over in, in uh, 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 Gardendale? Because they got a first Baptist Gardendale. They got 20 churches on every block and sit upon it. Why, look, why, I'm going, taking it where there is nothing there. I asked in Jasper, I said, tell me, y'all got, is that a whole lot there? And it's certainly not African American. That's the mission. That's why I played that clip, because I need you to help me take it there. Not building on top of folk and, and I just have a name because I got 20 campuses. You, you, that's where you at? When he had thus spoken. There would spoken. not be another McDonald's two blocks up the road. They don't do it like that. That's duplication. Amen. Take it where there is no one. Somebody said, we got to carry this water to the desert. And stop this hauling water to the sea. Let's please keep going. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. My Lord. Sorry most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. So at this point, now he was going to say, I'm not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Now at that point, don't get it twisted. I ain't going to die. I ain't going to retire. I ain't going to do none of that. All right? People say they want a double portion, but they don't know how to get it. This is how you get a double portion. Well, I've been under Pastor Green, I'm going to get a double portion. This is how you get a double portion. You do not get a double portion when you leave. You get a double portion when I leave. Jesus told Elijah, when you see me leave, not when I see you leave. Y'all still with me? When you see me go up, I'm going to drop it back. The disciples did not get a double portion when Peter left. They got greater works when Jesus left. Somebody prayed that today. Why stand you here gazing? Let's get it straight. Elijah said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, you ask a hard thing. You got to get through some Bethels and some Jerichos and some and all that to get this double point. And he went up and he he dropped the mantle. Mantles are not purchased. Mantles are dropped intentionally. Amen. And then he did twice as much. Now I ain't trying to put pressure on you, but anybody that leaves me that ain't doing twice, if you ain't got a forty thousand rally, sit down. Or some equivalent, you put should have a double portion of what I'm doing. If you get that legally, you will get that. If I release that on you. I hear the sound. Please, let's keep going. Well, I got to end it somewhere. Go to the next page. What was it? The next section real quickly. Yes, deliverance from anxiety. I already talked about that. Let's go next. Week. At least let me, I got it. What time I got? 1.30 yet? Um, 12.50. 12.50? Yes, sir. Lord, keep going. <laughs> Jesus, I thought it was 1.30. I could have sworn it was 1.30. How much my time I got? Okay, let's go. I can do it. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Here we go. Let's go. Because this, this message is loaded. What's the next section on that? It's the introduction. Introduction. I, for, I'm the preacher hour. I'm just getting to the introduction. <laughs> well, I'm going to say, you just getting an introduction. I'm the same thing you did at the club. You were standing there with some wine, and you saw a man cross the room, and you didn't introduce yourself until you was getting ready to go home. All right, let's read these introductions real quick. We have to do it. All right. It's about five of them. We got to do it quickly. We got to move. Okay. Part of, the, 40 minutes. part of the responsibility of the good shepherd. Part of the responsibility. 
is to protect the little lambs while they are being trained for their destiny. Okay, part of the, my responsibility in Jesus is to do what now? Train to the little, protect the little lambs. To do what? To protect the little, the lambs, little lambs while they are being trained, they are being trained for, their, for destiny. their destiny. Now, in the natural, what the little lambs are being trained to do, the shepherd got this flock, right? What did he train them to do? To grow wool. He's raiding them and feeding them, but what? To grow wool. Because at the proper time, he's going to shear the wool off the sheep. Well, is the sheep growing the wool for themselves or for the shepherd? So all that stuff you say you grow ought to be for your shepherd. That's all right. That's all right. We teach you today. Point B, please. The dilemma that the, the all dilemma children, that all children of God that face, all children, whether lamb or sheep. Faith, of God face is to be delivered from the wolves is to be delivered from the wolves that attack the lambs and the sheep that attack the lambs and the sheep the wolf don't just attack the lambs the children it attack the parents and the chorus 250 renowned men stood against Moses wolves in leadership Whew. let's keep going Let's see this summer is the opportunity. Yeah, see, all right. See, let's see this. This summer is the opportunity to release the, the summer. The next summer fruit is the what? Opportunity. Uppor to your support. Upport to the tea to release to release the right fruit. The right fruit into, into our the, children's into lives. Into our children, both our natural children. That's why we have in camp. Into our children's lives. And pull down the and, thought that and they pull are, down the thought the thought that they, they are, are a, a basket, basket case. case. Your children are not a basket case. And you are not a basket case. Thus bringing us to the fall. Baskets and not caskets. But not baskets of death. Some are baskets of fruit, of love and joy. Will you give God a praise that no one on your row is a basket case. My God. Hallelujah. Let's keep going. We got about 35 minutes now. The God's goal is to make sure that there are not children tossed to and Wait fro. Wait a minute. God's goal... Is to make sure. Is to make sure that there are not children. That there are not children tossed to and fro. Tossed to, to and fro. But protected. But protected through the God-given gifts. Through the God-given gifts. Of parents. Of parents. Mentors. Mentors. Coaches. Coaches. And a good shepherd. And a good shepherd. God's goal. That's Ephesians 4 paraphrase. God's intention. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting, the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unit of faith, that we be no more children tossed to and fro by the cunning slate and cleverness of unscrupulous men lying in wait to the sea. So God equips you with mature leaders to make sure that you're not over here one moment, over there one moment, but you're being trained and equipped so you're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. I ain't getting much, but you're warming up. The Bible ministry is not for filthy lucre. It's not for business cards. It's not for engagements. It's for everybody in here to grow up. And if you only make allowances for yourself, but nobody else. Then go out. Let's keep going. All right. Next section for me, please. Divine protection. All right. Bring that section. Divine protection. That was our topic, right? Yes, sir. Divine protection. Is it okay for me to say that all of our children that just came across this aisle will be divinely protected? That's what shepherds do. Divinely protected. Look at somebody say divine protection. Divine protection. From the wolves. We'll talk about them in a moment. 
Divine protection. Everybody say divine protection. Not just police protection. Not burglar alarm protection. All right, let's look at what this looks like. Uh, David, number one, quick. We got to move quickly. The David's, lion. The, David's sheep. About the giant is a story about sheep. Divine protection. First Samuel 17, 34. You'll see these things in there. Uh, read that for me, First Samuel 17, 34 through 37. It is incredible how God, uh, David, as a good shepherd, protected his sheep in three levels. And David said unto Saul, Thou servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion. Wait a minute. I kept my father's sheep, but while I was keeping my father's sheep, my father apostles, some things came against you. You cannot slay the giant till you handle the lion. You talk about a giant killer man, and you can't even handle the lion or the bear stage. You barely can take orders. Keep going. There came a lion and a bear. And a bear. And took a lamb out of the flock. And took what now? A and lamb. took a lamb. So it would be, would it be fair to call Goliath a wolf? And took a lamb. A lamb. Out of the flock. Out of the flock. And I went out after him. I went at him. And smote him. And smote him. And delivered it out of his mouth. And delivered him. He was halfway in his mouth. Legs kicking. Like some of you. The enemy think he's masticating, almost swallowed you. You barely kicking. But in the name of Jesus, uh, I take the staff and I pull you out of the lion's mouth. 